I once made a website for a nonprofit named eCal, which you can find at eCal.ca. It was one of my favorite nonprofit websites to work on because they were basically any web designer's dream client. They provided me content on time, all in one go, and the content was concise and organized. The same individual that I worked with with the eCal site contacted me about another site for a different nonprofit that needed to get updated. And this organization was called Siwa Canada. As you can see from the site's current design, it's not completely horrible in terms of design. However, it lacks some organization in some key areas. Like this menu, for example. It just kind of dumps all these projects on you because these are all pages and not post types. And therefore, you can't just easily use a widget to display it. You would have to do this manually. And to continue this trend, in the sidebar, the pages also got dumped just so they had another way to get to them but ended up being horrible because it's way too long. Also, did you see that homepage? This homepage goes against a couple of the web design rules I follow when I make websites. Like how just small the homepage is. It's just not big enough and informative enough to be effective and convey all the key parts of the website. So if I were to redesign it, it should be a lot longer. If you want to see the other rules I follow, check out the web design mistakes video I did. Shameless plug, link in the description, watch that shit, it's my favorite video. One thing I really didn't like about the current site is the homepage slider. This is where they would have all their recent projects. I ended up convincing them about how bad sliders really are so that hopefully in the new design, it wouldn't have one. So overall, the site did need an update despite it almost looking modern in some areas, which leads me into this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact process I took making their WordPress website and the thoughts I had when making the design and development decisions. I'll try to explain as much UX and UI decision making as much as possible. As well as some on the web developer side, like trying to consider the best way to go about implementing stuff and the order of which I do them. So I hope you can get something from it, whether it's about design or development. Unfortunately, due to circumstances I don't want to live through again, I lost a lot of the footage of me actually building the site. So you won't get to see as much sped up building as I usually would have in the other episodes. Nevertheless, moving forward, let's jump into the plan of the site. I knew it was going to be a nine page website. Home, who we are, vision and mission, photo gallery, video gallery, projects, ways to give, volunteer, and contact us. For custom functionality, it would have a donation form, some galleries, and a couple of contact forms. Nothing too big. Getting into the development, for this site, I went with a theme called My X, which is a WordPress WP Bakery multi-purpose theme. It has some demos you can choose from, but I chose this one, which I don't have the name of because the theme forest preview leads to an error. I spent quite a long time on the homepage. I followed the homepage layout that I made a video about, which you can check out, link in the description. I promise that's the last time I'll mention it. And what I ended up with is the homepage links to the most important parts of the pages, like the about page and the projects pages. And so if someone doesn't know what page to go to, because the homepage links to all the other primary pages, they can see whatever interests them the most and go to that page. I also wanted to note something that's important for user experience. This homepage and the homepage alone does a great job of fully explaining who Siwa is without you needing to go to the other pages. And there's so many different things working together here to achieve that. The hero section at the top gives a brief summary of who they are. They are a leading humanitarian and social development charity. And a very similar section underneath is a about paragraph explaining who they are and what they do in more detail. And lastly, in the footer, there's a quick blurb about who they are too. All these things work together to make it painfully obvious who the organization is about and what they do. You might think that this is an obvious goal of a website to be easily understood, but let me show you an example of some people who don't think like that. Tell me what this shit is about. Respect the land and traditions? Well, that's not helpful. Partnerships with our neighborhoods? Still tells us nothing. Okay, let's scroll down to see if there's anything else. Together, building a future that will last generations? That's useless. And then a quote that tells us nothing. Some news articles that tell us nothing. And then we have, Pattern operates a global portfolio of high-performing renewable energy facilities. Okay, that tells us something. And another testimonial that gives us the industry, but not specifically what they do. And if you're curious about what they do, 
They develop, construct, own, and operate high-quality wind, solar, transmission, and energy storage projects worldwide. Too bad they left this on the about page and didn't put it on the home page. So after the entire home page, despite how nice and modern this website looks, it does a horrible job of explaining what they actually do and offer. This is bad for user experience because the user is left guessing what the site is about and they don't have a clear picture of where to go next. This is why I try to make home pages painfully obvious about who they are and what they do. And this is what I did for Siwa here. The heading clearly shows who they are and what they do within 10 seconds, all available for the user without having to put in any effort or even scrolling. This is much more better and effective than the carousel they had on their homepage before. Moving on to the about page, here was the content I was given. Most of it is just a wall of text, which of course was the challenge. Here's what I did. The first way to split up a wall of text is to add some images, which I did here. I also added some what I call highlight text, which is just text slightly bigger to add some focus and visual impact to it. This next section was a list, so I split it up with another image. And then I reflected the same content underneath because the content was similar. The last bit of content was easily formatted with some more images, which finally leads to a call to action. And there you have it, there's the about page done. Overall, we turned a wall of text into something that's hopefully more visually appealing and easier to read for users. For the photo gallery page, I used one of the elements that I think the theme provided. With Elementor, you usually get a good pop-up widget that looks actually modern, but a lot of the other ones, like from the plugins, look like they were made 10 years ago. And that's basically the entire photo gallery page, is this one widget. For the video gallery page, it's just a grid of videos. It didn't need anything more than that. Now for the project pages. In terms of development, they were the worst to make. They probably took the most time, despite it only being one WP Bakery element on the page. And it had a bunch of errors that I had to spend hours fixing. Another problem was the design of the project grid. Before, it only showed the name and the project label when you hovered over it. There were seven different styles and none of them showed the label by default. So I had to override the theme CSS and fix it myself. And that fix was just for user experience, so people didn't have to hover over each and every one just to read the projects. The Ways to Give page, I think, in my opinion, is designed in a very user-intuitive way. Each way to give is separated in its own box, which makes it very clear for users what it is they're looking at just by scanning the page. And then at the bottom, I included some donation information as well. I'll leave out the contact and the volunteer pages as they're pretty basic and there's not too much to say about them. Last but not least is the donation page. With donation pages, it's super important to provide a story and background about your organization. This adds more to the page and also, very importantly, it increases donations or conversions. Overall, this site was a bit on the larger side because of all the amount of pages there were and all the bugs I had to fix just to get the theme working and functioning the way I want it. I ended up showing them the site and they were super happy with the site and only had a few changes to make. If you want to become a better web designer or developer, check out my other videos.